of this experimentation, all of this looking around, trying to find the swing that's right for me and possibly trying to help you do the same. Welcome back to Golf Test Dummies channel where I use my game to help your game. If you've been following the channel, you see that I've been working in my garage to groove my swing in lieu of the practice range. And I feel like I've made some real leaps and bounds. I've worked on my right arm. I've worked on kind of keeping my, my shape and all of that, as Gary says. And I've, um, I've hit a really good tee shot here, and I've hit a really good second shot. And then I hit a good solid third shot with a utility wedge. But I left it right, which if you remember from the first two videos, I was having issues with leaving things right. So I'm hoping that's not going to be a pattern today. If you guys have watched the pitching video, uh, how to pitch the golf ball simply, I've had this shot before. <laughs> Okay, so I didn't save my par. I ended up with a bogey. You know, it ran past the hole about 13 feet. So that's a bogey to start this back nine on a par five. That's fine. I want to ask you guys, I got this shirt for $12. I thought it was a steal, but it's been sitting in my closet for almost a year and I've never worn it just because I'm not a real flashy guy. And this shirt just looks a little bit loud. I mean, what do you guys think of this shirt? Leave me some comments down below. Is the shirt good or bad? I double crossed that one. I pulled that way left. That's over there on the par three. What's funny is this is a pretty long drive. It went through all these trees and uh, that's pretty good distance for me. I think with this hole, that right side is OB and if you if you do manage to stay inbounds on the right, you are completely dead. So I know that my mistake is to go left because at least I've, I've got some sort of play at it here. And I think just that mental game that gets played in your head is, is that, that explains the double cross. I'm just going to try and punch a four iron through this like a field goal. This could be disaster. Holy, wow, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad at all. That's pretty awesome, actually. That's a good miss. Guys, today I'm actually filming two different vlogs, or two different videos, I should say. The first one is going to be a review of the Grint app, G-R-I-N-T, the Grint. So you'll have to go check that out. That'll be on the channel. Uh, but today, let's get down to brass tacks. What, what am I talking about here with the Gary Edwin system in this particular video? Now, you've seen the first 18 holes that I played in two different course vlogs where I just went completely green and just tried it out of the gate and I felt like I found a few things and it uh, it actually kind of surprised me and then you'll see me working in the garage you'll see me working in my garage with a, a blanket and a foam golf ball and a seven iron hitting shots into my mitt and uh, just trying to groove everything trying to get the motion down trying to really ingrain it and also maybe a little bit of a mental a mental trick to try and take the hit and the kill instinct out of this swing for me and just count on it to be solid and count on it to, to, to give me solid contact more often. Uh, coming out here today, the main part of this video, I, I really want to see does working with a net actually help you to groove a swing instead of the driving range or the golf course. I know a lot of people think that hitting nets are a good way to practice. It's also a good portion of the population that thinks that hitting into a net, yeah, you might be able to gauge solid contact or where it hits the net, 
but you really have no idea of curvature. And I want to see today if those results and the, the feel that I have from that is lying to me or if it's a pretty honest representation of what can be achieved working in your garage night after night hitting 30 to 40 golf balls a night. Let's find out. That struck really well. Center club face strike. Good high long ball flight. And I'm into the wind up here. I don't know if you could tell it, but there's a pretty stout wind coming down this, this wind tunnel right here. Let's get up here and check this golf ball. Right, I'm actually going to go up here and use the grant and see what kind of yardage I have. Okay, it's telling me I've got 95 to the center of the green. This is a blue flag, which means it's in the back, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going right to the middle of the green. I'm going to take this off of GPS mode to save my battery. And I've got a 54 in hand. So there's a ho-hum par. I can't ask for a better strike than that. It's a little right. I may have been aiming that way. It was a great ball flight. Seven iron from about 165 into a little breeze. That's actually just on the fringe by about three inches. That's, I mean, that's, that's practically a green in regulation. So I did not miss it that far right. That's a birdie. And my pitch mark is actually about three feet behind that ball. So it flew most of the way here and it actually bounced to the right. If it had bounced a little bit left, that would have been a green regulation and a birdie. Any of you guys that watched the Zen Golf Review that I did, this is the hole. I finally got you a good angle on this hole. This is the hole that normally you have to come down this really narrow passageway and hit like a four iron down there to about 200 yards and it leaves you over 200 yards going back on the dog leg. But if I cut this corner off and go out over this shed right out here, then I'm gold. So what you need here is a big high fade and that's not my normal shot. So let's try it. <laughs> that's hit really great. I think somebody's trying to kill me with golf ball. That's hit really great, man. Oh, it just didn't cut. It's right on the shed. <laughs> this, this doesn't look like a great drive, but this is a great drive. This is my aim point. I aimed right here on the left side of this shed, and my goal was to just cut it that way and be more over there toward these stumps. Uh, I did not get any cut. It was a perfectly straight ball flight. It was high, it was long. It's left me in a bit of a, a pickle, a bad spot, because I've got to have some serious height to get over these trees in front of me. Okay, so that was a very well struck shot. That was a great shot. It's right of the green. And I know that I've been missing right, but I think with this one, maybe I was aiming right, maybe I was aiming right. I don't know but with this one I was trying to get it more forward in my stance to make sure that I got up on it and I may have flipped at it a little bit in an effort to get that height and I did get the height I got the height I needed it just started right and stayed to the right this this is what I've been waiting for this is the day that I've been waiting for when it finally starts to pay off
this is a great tee shot. It's right down the heart. Um, I'm going to try this three hybrid that I have. I always hook this thing really bad. But I got 220 something to the, uh, the flag on this long par four. Yeah, that's why it's never in my bag. I'm trying it out because I need something like that. This club just uh, just let me down. Weird lie, weird lie. Oh man, I knew that was gonna happen, and I was fighting against it. And made a weird swing too. Damn. Oh, all right, so. That's a bogey five. That puts me back to plus one on the back side. Hate that, but at the same time, I think this is the place where a lot of people get caught. This is the place where a lot of people uh, make a serious error. When you're, when you're chasing a score like that and you're trying to force uh, some kind of a result. So I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to try and just and keep hitting fairways and making good solid swings. And um, just, just focus on hitting the ball solid and stop worrying about the outcome because if I try and chase a birdie here to get that back, it's going to put me in big trouble. Not my best form. I know what you guys are thinking. Man, that last hole, that par four, you might not have taken a bogey if you just hit a club that you were familiar with and that you trusted, right? You're, you're, you're absolutely right. That might have made all the difference on that hole. So now, my drive hit this tree and fell down. I've got these boxes, whatever these are in these trees, and I've got a good bit over 200 yards to go. So I should do the smart thing here, not hit this damn club. Well struck. Clipped the trees, took some of the juice off of it, but it's up there fairly, fairly pitchable. So I'm happy with that. I thought this was a little closer from back there, but that uh, clipping that tree branch really took uh, took a lot off of it. I haven't tried a bunker shot yet. hole I may or may not have mentioned this but now that I need a birdie slash eagle slash double eagle slash ace on this uh, this last hole to uh, to have a really good score uh, the 18th is the number one handicap hole yeah, how unfair this hole is I am still 350 yards out and I'm dead center of your aim point from back there. I've still got 350 yards to go. This is a par five. I'll tell you, this hole is unbelievably tough. Oh, looky, we're gonna try this club one more again. That big hook is why this club tends to stay in the bag. Minimize the damage. I'm just gonna play a little punch run down here to in front of this water. Right again, but well struck. That wraps up this nine hole course vlog for the Gary Edwin system. Um, I put up a pretty good score. I made a birdie on this backside and I was sitting at even par until I pulled out that damn three hybrid. It stays at home for a reason.
it's because it's just a hook monster that's all it does it just hooks golf balls um, but you know I've got a driver and then my next club down is a four iron so I'm looking for something to kind of be that gap in my bag for like 220 yard shots and maybe I should just play a little bit of strategy and just lay back and hit something like uh, you know a six iron and leave myself a pitch into the green maybe that's a, a strategy I should start employing but today the ball striking was really solid on the whole not every shot was perfect but um, the ball striking was really solid the flight sometimes I'd leave it right sometimes I'd have a little draw uh, so I have not quite got that mastered yet but really that's not what I was looking for today I was looking for solid strikes and just to see what I got and the results were pretty damn great. Um, the work that I put in in the garage has definitely made a difference. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments down below. Remember, tell me if you like the shirt or not. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, do so. Please do so. I upload every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys follow along with me. Thanks.